England to Belgium to in one of the final games before the Euros this summer. And as an England fan, it was an interesting night. There was some really good, pos- there were some real positives. There were some real big negatives as well. Um, and I'm going to start with the, the positives tonight. Of course, Jude Bellingham grabbing that last minute equaliser. It's really good to see him. You know, he needs to start adding the Real Madrid goals to England. And I thought overall we had a decent performance tonight. Should have scored much earlier on when uh, Mainu put in a great uh, tackle from a press that put the ball up to him up close and he, and he skied it. But he made up for that in the end and he atoned for that. That was a real positive. Mainu, the other positive tonight, to prove why he should be on the plane. Just his calmness in possession, his ability to draw in players and break a line with the drop of a shoulder. His passing was excellent, excellent for large parts of this game. I understood why he came off because we needed a goal. So you want to get more forward thinking players like Madison, like Anthony Gordon onto the football pitch. But I thought Mainu was a real positive tonight for England in so many ways, just in terms of winning the ball back, progressing the ball, sitting with it deep. He just has a skill set that no other England central midfielder has. The sad part is that he wouldn't have played tonight if Jordan Henderson was fit. And Jordan Henderson at no point in his career could do what Mainu does at 18 years of age, let alone now in the twilight years. So look, it was a real positive if he was there. I hope that this sends the message through the Gareth Southgate that this young man has to be at the Euros, not necessarily to start every single game, but he will be needed at times for his calmness, for his ability to break lines from a deep lying position. He was excellent tonight. I thought Ivan Tony looked really good up front as well. I thought Ivan Tony. Uh, put in a really good display, good hold-up play, took his penalty well, won it well. Didn't really get fed an abundance of opportunities, which we'll get onto in a few moments. But those were the three real positives that stood out in the game for me today. When it comes to the negatives, there's so many of them. Disappointed with Phil Foden tonight. I thought it, he was busy. He was involved. But he had so many good, a couple of good opportunities to score, and he messed them up. A number of good opportunities to feed the ball into the likes of Ivan Tony, and he didn't make it. A little bit greedy at times. His approach play was excellent. He's he, listen. He's touch and t- half turn is maybe the best in world football at this moment in time. That element was great. But when you play as far forward as Foden was tonight, end product is expected, and that was lacking from him again in an England shirt. Similarly with Bowen, Bowen obviously nearly nearly scored a goal. He had some great play at times and he did set up that Phil Foden chance late on. But far too often, I thought he took a shot when he should have played the pass and his decision making tonight was really, really off. That So that wasn't impressive. Then comes the mistakes. Pickford with an horrendous clearance or pass. I'm not too sure it was trying. Then he runs a bit back in on goal. Calamitous, absolute calamitous from him. Set England off on the on, on the wrong foot very early on in the game, 11 minutes in when Yuri Tillemans gets his first goal. And then for the second, listen, a really good cross and a good diving header from Yuri Tillemans. But Dunk, again, under no real pressure, goes to ground when he shouldn't. And, and I think for me personally, I know injuries kind of led to him being in the team today, but Dunk is not an international football player. Not by any stretch of the imagination is he an international football player. He'll probably go to the Euros because there's a lot of youngsters and I don't know whether they've got enough skin in the game, but we have to start looking at the the brand weights of this world. Dunk is an international class. And I think that was proven tonight, not just by his mistake, but it was a lot of hesitation. There was a lot of moments where he just didn't look right. He looked like a fish out of water for large parts of this game. And overall, tonight, my problem with England is what I'll go back to always. And I wanted to start with the positives, but then I look at the manager and I just turn around and say, why are we poor in certain areas tonight? Yes, some of the approach play was beautiful from Mainu, beautiful from Bellingham, beautiful from Madison when he came on. Foden had some good moments as well, Bowen. But it was all individual brilliance and a couple of players sort of taking it upon themselves to, oh, let's, 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 let's create a little triangle, let's give, do a little give and go, let's try a little bit of skill, let's try a nice through ball. 
but there wasn't a con- for me. I didn't see. I don't see a continuous pattern of play for England. It is moment of brilliant moments of brilliance from individual players as opposed to a single moving organism. And that, for me, stems from this manager. We were the most dominant team, but what do we have? I'm going to guess 65%, 63.5% of the ball tonight. I kind of knew that without looking at the statistics. But that was because of the way Belgium set up more than anything. Counter-attack football, trying to catch us out. And for me, again, we just look a team that at times looks devoid of ideas. And we look devoid of ideas because... The players are throwing their all at it. They're trying everything they know in, the, in, in in their book to get us through. But there isn't that drilling. There isn't that training as a collective team together. They do it for their clubs, but they don't do it together. And I just, the way we play football is going to be a hindrance. Then you look at the substitutions again, and you see the likes of, the, 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 I'm not saying they were wrong substitutions of Ollie Watkins and Gordon and Madison, but coming on in the 74th and 80th minute, respectively try the fact that we're a team that's going to rely on moments. We need players to be as fresh as possible. So those substitutions have got to come 10 to 15 minutes earlier to really let them get into this game because the goal came 15 minutes or so after making those more attacking substitutions. We may have gone on to win if we had another 10 minutes, but again, the negativity from this manager, and this is the crazy thing because he's de- he's defenders out there will say, but we had more of the ball. We had 19 shots uh, on goal. We had seven shots on target to their three. We dominated. We deserve to win. And Southgate buys into this nonsense. He buys into it. So from his point of view, we would have been losing 2-1, but he'll look at the statistics and go, yeah, but in terms of patterns of, in terms of the, the domination of play and the statistics, we were the better team. And that bothers me. There's something about that that bothers me because it's now, by the way, only four wins in 26 games against teams ranked inside the top uh, 10 of the FIFA rankings. And it's a damning painful, worrying statistic. And I know we're not going to sack him before the international break arises. I get that. And I know there's some mo- but some moments like people go, well, look, Manu looked good and, you know, Bellingham looks good and Tony did well and that's on the manager. And some of that is, but remember, Manu only played because Henderson got injured. Tony only got the start and we only got to see whether he was good enough because Kane is out. It would have been the same players always playing. We wouldn't have seen these emerging players if there, if there wasn't some injury problems. But our style of play looks the sta- same no matter who comes in and who goes out. It is drab, and it relies on individual moments of brilliance. And when you come up against decent teams that have a you know really deep block, they give you very little space. It's hard to break them down. Our players become lethargic. They become tired. They become a little bit scatty they make mistakes and that's because they're not well drilled in this England team when it comes to the attacking element of the game and that for me lies at the feet of the manager negative substitutions as well all of these things as we build up to a big summer of football in Germany at the Euros and I would love to say we have the ability to win it and I think we have the personnel too but I think we have a management team a little bit like looking at Bayern Munich this year. They have the personnel to win the league. They have the personnel to win the Champions League. They don't have the manager to blend them all together and get the very best out of them indeed. That's my view. That's my opinion. I would love to get yours. I know he isn't going to be sacked, but I want him sacked as soon as possible. Give these players a more progressive manager, a manager that's going to run better better patterns of play, better training drills, so that when it comes to trying to break down teams like Belgium today, it flows more, and it isn't all about Will Bellingham beat his man and shoot and score? Will Foden's half-turn work this time? It needs to be more than that, in my humble opinion. Hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribing to the Football Terrace. Leave us your comments below, and I'll see you all again soon. Peace.